Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, get ready for Gnosis. Well, I'm going to give you a quick course here on candles and candle magic, as it's often called. And I've been using candle magic for about 30 years. It's my favorite type. I think we all kind of like candles. It gives you a mystical feel. Uh, but there are lots of drawbacks to candles. And uh, I, um, they put out a lot of poison. Candles are made from paraffin. Paraffin is not a natural wax. It's a byproduct of the manufacture of gasoline. And candles can be very expensive. Uh, most candles are what they call dipped. They take a white candle like this and they dip it in color. And the more it's dipped, the more cost it, uh, it costs you because it's a process. They have to dip it, they have to let it dry, then they dip it again. And this is how you get the color. Finding candles that are colored through and through are difficult. And I'm not so sold on that anymore anyway. I mean, that's traditional. And those that want to get a very uh, full understanding of old traditional candle magic herbs, uh, alchemical oils, etc., can get our traditional sorcery course. The finest course ever written on that, very detailed. It also describes all the formulas we sell, which it makes it a very valuable resource in general. But it's a classic text on that. But the actual CDs that come with that course um, give you an entirely new system of how to really set things up, where you don't have to set up altars and put cloths down and everything else. Now, I did this for years, and I used to burn quite a bit of candles. I'd burn 9 to, um, to 11 candles all the time. And um, this can be very expensive, but it also generates a huge amount of heat, smoke, and crap. So I eventually had to actually uh, put a shed up in my backyard. I turned that into a place where I could burn candles and safely. Now, burning lots of candles, no matter how you do it, is not safe. It's dangerous. I've come up with the safest way possible. And this will give you probably a 97% safety factor. Because you don't really have open flame, but there are some hot aspects to it. But the way I'm going to show you after all this is a way that uh, pretty much eliminates any serious fires, even though you still have heat problems, which I'll talk about. But I lived in the desert for many years, and trying to burn candles inside or out was a nightmare. It was 110 degrees, 24 hours a day. So you can imagine trying to do that. The other problem is, is that uh, paraffin, as much as you don't think so, puts off horrible soot. And all candles do this that are paraffin. Um, your best candles are soy. You should stay away from palm oil candles because they are raping the environment to get palm uh, oil candles. Um, there are soy. All of these tend to be very expensive. So what is your least expensive, safest um, uh, candles? And they are what are called tea lights. Now, these are basically sizes of tea lights. Tea lights generally... Um, come in uh, these little metal aluminum containers and of different sizes and the different sizes of how long it will burn. Now let me go back to candles. Candles, again, a lot of people like to use candles that are in um, glass jars. These are still paraffin um, and they last seven days, 20 days. This is very typical in the uh, Latin way of doing things. You can find these longer tube candles in most supermarkets in America, and particularly in Latin areas where they have saints and other things on them, because these are used as devotional candles. They still are dangerous, and they're difficult to light. They are, you know, they're uh, usually about a foot high, so how do you light that? Well, you, once you light it once, you leave it on. Is that safe to do? Should you leave your house with a candle burning? Well, I wouldn't recommend that. That's very dangerous. They're still open, and if you have pets and other things, they could bang them. Um, it's still not the best. The system I'm going to show you is the best because you're creating a metal container that can't start a fire very easily. So, so you have taper candles. These are candles that we all see on dinner tables. There's votive candles, which kind of look like these. You see those generally in churches and so forth. Um, and there are candles of every possible shape, etc. And of course, they all run, they leak, they're very messy, they look pretty, 
Uh, but if you don't put things down like aluminum foil to catch the candle wax, if you have like a decorative Christmas candle, you're going to ruin your tablecloths and everything else. Or some people put them on plates or whatever they do. But paraffin and wax is a big pain. And if it gets on stuff, it's a problem. In general, it's a giant mess. Particularly if you burn lots of candles, like I used to do. So burning nine candles at a time and having these rituals going for two, three days and then repeating that over and over again, having two or three altars was a problem. Well, I figured out a much better system. It's also very dangerous. And as I said, you'll be surprised the amount of soot one little candle puts out. It's shocking how much paraffin puts out in terms of soot. And you breathe that all in. So these are toxic time bombs. Stay away from them. So tea lights and uh, seem to, for one reason or another, even though they're paraffin, but they're a type of paraffin. You can find uh, tea lights that are not paraffin that are made from other things. Um, again, soy, etc. And as you get na more natural like foods, you're going to pay a lot more money for it. I haven't found that very necessary. Now, Having a paraffin candle of this size and in this particular type of paraffin wax doesn't seem to put out any kind of soot. It's quite shocking. Yet if that was a candle, a taper candle, stump candles, whatever you call them, they're all bad. Don't use any of them. They're very toxic. And of course, as I said, I love candlelight, uh, but um, you're inhaling horrible cancer-causing ingredients. So for some reason, these don't put out very much soot. Now, they're also very safe. Because what happens when you um, light these is they, they turn a lot into liquid all around it. So if you just bump it a little, it tends to go out. Well, that's good because if you bump something or an animal bumps something or a child does, well, it puts the flame out. So while you'll have hot wax there that is dangerous and hurtful, generally you're not going to find that that's going to start a fire. And it's not going to hurt a person or a child or an animal, even if it spills on them to a degree that it is a permanent wound. It's going to hurt, though. Hot wax hurts. Now, There's also a lot of other factors here. Now, when you have candles, you generally carve into them more mess. And um, then you anoint them, uh, which is more mess and problems, meaning you put an oil rub on them, etc. Now, as I said, the whole we have a whole course. I'm going to show you how to make a candle, a new kind of candle lantern altar. And uh, you can get all these ingredients locally at a very low price. I don't think we're going to be offering these in the future, but you never know. It's just too much work for too little profit. Now, you can buy these little types. Now, um, tea, they're kind of, they call these tea lights, and these are used uh, oftentimes in chafing dishes. And uh, so many other things now use tea lights uh, because they're cheap, uh, they're safe relatively. And um, I've even seen these made into little heaters where they have a actual um, porcelain that you put six or eight of these in a, surf in a circle under a porcelain product and it actually works as a heater. But these are used in all sorts of things and there's many types of little things that use tea lights. We also have very large tea light items uh, that you can get as well. Everything from... Uh, haunted houses, which I have, and I use it as a multi. See if we can get a little shot of that. Now that little house you have there, well, there's you can put seven lights, tea lights behind that, and I use this for uncrossing cases. Here's some lanterns. Now let's go back here. But there are many different types. I'll show you another one here of a what you put these in. But let's go back to the lights here. Now, the size of the tea light depends on how long it burns. Um, now, these kind of lights you can get everywhere. You can get them at Ikea. They're three or four cents, five cents. So they're very inexpensive as well, and that's important because you don't want to waste a lot of money on that. Um, so your average tea light lasts for about two to four hours. There are tea lights that last six to eight hours, and there are tea lights that last... Here's a 12-hour tea light. This is my favorite. It's in an aluminum, uh, which means, and I'll show you, you can do is allows you to write on the side of it. Uh, as I said, this seems to be a type of paraffin that doesn't put off soot. 
And here is a 24 hour tea light. And you can see how big it is. I mean, you know, there's no way to have a tea light burn longer. You have to put more of the actual burning, the candle there. So this is quite a large one and it's difficult to use. And um, there are problems with these when they burn that long, even though they, you can do it very safely. But they get hot, they're big, yeah, these tend to be expensive, but it's 24 hours. So you're getting a lot of energy putting out there. I prefer the 12 hour ones, they seem to work fine. Uh, these, uh, a lot of people will probably use initially. I used these for years. These are four hours and um, they're very cheap. They're five, six cents each. And you can certainly use those. I like to burn, particularly with all the different cases and for myself personally, I like to burn something for 12 hours without having to go back and put three of these in there because that's very inconvenient. You, you don't know when they burn out exactly and you go back and put another one in and then another one in. Well, having a 12 hour. And what you got to do is just see what your prices and convenience factor are. Um, I found that the bigger ones um, cost the same as using three of these. Um, so th th there's, uh, there's no financial benefit, but there's a time saving. These tend to cost a little more, but you're saving a lot of time because you're getting a 24 hour burn. Now, the longer something burns, the better generally, because you want to keep that energy going for your manifestation. Um, so look around, see what you can get. It's a price problem, it's a, but availability of these kind of things are just about everywhere and they're cheap. Um, I'm sure you can get these just about anywhere. And of course, you can buy lots of them in big boxes on Amazon and other places. Um, but just about every store has these. Certainly Target, Walmart uh, has these all the time because people use these all the time uh, for, as I said, many things. So what do you do? Well, we're going to show you how to prepare uh, candles as well, but I'm going to do that in a minute. What you're going to do is get a lantern. Now, I've got a couple of lanterns here. Now, these are uh, what a lantern is caused. This is a real nice one, and there's a lot of safety features here. Get way back here. Now, a candle lantern is just that. It's a lantern, as you would uh, think of in, what, colonial days? Or, in general, something you'd put outside? And what a lantern is, it's an encasement. You got to remember that most candles, uh, when they were used, were used in, 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 uh, um, in a lantern. Because guess what, people? If you use them straight out, the wind blows them. So you need actually, oops, you need actually to um, cover them so that the air around there doesn't move it. Now, this is a one that's really a, quite a nice one. It has a little, I don't know if we can see all that. Let's get some more light in here. Uh, oops. Get my other light going here. Got unplugged. So you can see this glitter. This is a very nice one. You can get these kind of lanterns. Um, you can get these kind of lanterns in every possible shape and type. Okay, now I can see that much better. So you can see how this is, um, and we'll go in there. Charm, magic enchanting, blessed, blessed be, you know. So this is very witchcrafty. which you may or may not like. But what's nice about this, and we'll talk about the different types, is that this is a closed metal container, meaning it is 98% safe. Uh, creating a fire with this is very difficult. There's never an open flame. So you're, uh, the candles that burn inside here, but most lanterns are sealed. And we'll show you some. This is a very nice one. I'm going to do a complete setup here for you. It has this little bar here. Can you see that? Am I doing a good stop there? So this has one of these little latches, which keeps it nice and... So you can see that. But these get very hot up here. So if you grab it here, you're going to get a serious burn. If you hold it, children, dogs, pets. But if it bangs over anything, 
it's going to put the, the candle out. And secondly, you're getting no direct flame anywhere. Now these open up like this. This has been well used. You can see the uh, wax and stuff in here. And while these are very clean and neat mostly, you still have some problems with wax, and we'll talk about that. But let me show you another, actually. Now you see a lot of these out here, but here's another very simplistic but nice type. I do this for single little burns uh, in our emergency situations or if I need something. Now this is just, again, you put your actual tea light in here. Then of course this goes, oops, there's the person I was working on. And you light it and put it in there. And we'll show you how to do those things. And they, they get these everywhere. This is obviously a nautical theme one. You can get these for different things. But that's a lantern of sorts. It's a little one. Maybe you have little space or you'd like to have a, uh, a little um, instead of this. This is quite large. This is what, about five inches? And this is at least 14 tall. So it's fairly big, but it's, it's self-contained. And it varies of how much you want to invest. Something like that's probably going to cost you around $35, $40. There are, there are ones that are um, all different price. This is one of the lower priced ones. Now, it doesn't have metal sides, but it has glass sides. So this is just as safe. Just as safe. This has glass. It's very difficult to break that. Um, so it is very safe. And, of course, you're going to have no direct flame in there either. So, uh, that's important. And they all work a little different. This has this kind of latch that you pop open. It's got the glass you can see in. Some people may like to see in. And, of course, it is 100% safe. There's glass going all the way up, all the way around, except in the top here. This is open because the heat's got to come out. And, of course, the heat comes out here as well. This is where things get very, very hot. And this is where it's dangerous. If you grab this and try and move it, you got a problem. Even if you hold it by this, it's, uh, even if you hold it by the hook on the top, it's too hot to, to carry. You'd have to use a, uh, a kitchen uh, oven if you want to move it around once it's hot. So that's one thing to keep in mind. But here's your entire altar is in one little candle lantern. Simple as that. Now, you can modify this as much or as little as you want. And, of course, there's some special features here. So, um, what I generally do here is I also use these lights. These are what they call submersible um, aquarium lights. Let's uh, let's show this here. These are what I like. They're small and they're round, and of course they work uh, by remote control. So you put three triple A's there. You put them in here. This fit perfectly in most T light plans. And then of course you have your choice of lights. You turn it on, and then of course you can pick the colors you want. So you can go through a whole variety of colors. These are really nice. I'm not sure what these cost, around $25, maybe less. But you can, depending on the ritual you're doing, you have a wide variety of light. And these usually last, uh, you know, I use rechargeable batteries and stuff, which don't last all that long. And that's a way to save money as well. <clears throat> that's the problem with using batteries. And there are other lights we're working on putting in here that plug in. But uh, these are very nice that way. These are very sturdy. Um... And what you do is you just get a rechargeable batteries with a charger, and then uh, you get several batteries. And they're very cheap now. Rechargeable batteries used to be super expensive. Now they're pretty cheap, so you can actually have those uh, rechargeable batteries and extra ones, and that way you don't have to uh, waste a lot of money on batteries and also um, waste all that those resources. I hate throwing away batteries. They're toxic. So what you have here is that. Um, so what else goes with that? Well, you got to figure how long you want to fit in here, and we'll show you the different things. 
But anytime you burn a tea light, you want to make sure you use a holder if possible. But I'll tell you right now, even though they're fairly clean, as you can see from this, this actually spilled over and bubbled over from a tea light. So it gets very hot in there, and particularly within lanterns, and you seem to have that sweating and other problem, which is a problem. But you just have to scrape this out. Usually you just take a, um, an old knife that you use for this, scrape this out, and um, uh, you can even um, put these under hot water and get rid of the uh, little bit that's left here. Now you'll notice that the smaller tea lights fit in here no problem. And this means it's held, again, it's a double safety feature so that this, which you put in here, you're not going to have a problem with it. So even if it moves around a little, you're not going to have a problem. And it's important to do that and you want to keep the wax on your candle holder and not all over the place. Now, here's the problem. Me no fit. Anytime you get past these, which I think go up to about eight hours, you're going to have a problem. They won't fit in a traditional candle holder. Same thing here. They don't fit in there. But there's a way around that. You just have to be a little bit careful. Now, um, this is going to go inside here. What you're going to do is you're going to take a Photograph. Of course, these are our people I know or myself. So I can use a Polaroid. If not, just print out a piece of paper, people. That's all. There is energy there, a small amount, but you can still connect them. You got to do what you have to do. Um, you can also use someone's handwriting. You can tape a little piece of hair onto that handwriting slip or tape a little piece of hair on. A uh, piece of paper. I mean, that's something that could be sent to you in a mail by a relative, etc. If you want to go through that. So certainly somebody can cut a teeny bit of hair off, put it on some uh, tape, tape that to a piece of paper and mail it to you if it's a relative, etc. Or you do that for your pets, you can. The easiest thing is if it's someone you know or close to you is have the, of course, have a Polaroid taken in one of our cameras. And of course, our cameras are important. So we're going to break this up into a couple of videos, but we'll get it going. So you need to have that forever you're working on. Now, the light you're going to put on there is going to be tended on the situation. So if it's a love matter, you would use, where's the red people? You would use red. If it's money, you would use green. Blue is protection. Well, that's purple, which is a power color. It's good for everything, and it adds a lot of push to your rituals. If you want blue is protection. And, of course, you have all these variants. You see them on there? These are very nice. I mean, they work well. As I said, the only problem is, is having batteries uh, go for long periods of time that are chargeable. So, you're going to do that. And we'll start this one out. I'll show you here. I've got to set something up here actually for a client. So here's just a standard picture that I printed out. Now, you take this and you put it on there. And this is for a success case. And we're going to use this actual, and we can scrape this out a little bit if we want to. It's not that critical. I usually clean these up after major rituals, but you go in there and you clean this up and you run this under hot water and it melts it enough to get rid of that little excess. So actually, I'm going to do this for 12 hours. I'll show you how it works. Now, this is for a success case. So what you need is to get yourself a Sharpie-type pen. And we're going to put success runes on here. That's the victory rune. I always like to add power to it. That's the power rune, victory rune, power rune. This has to do with money, so I put money on there. 
And then we'll put another power rune. Then we'll put one of those success. Here's a victory rune. Now, that's why runes are important for you to learn how to use because they're so easy to write. Uh, it's hard to write any other magical things on it. The runes are meant to be carved easily and simply. So, and, of course, we have our rune course, which you should know anyway. If you're, if you're looking to generate power, um, it's a fantastic system, the runes, and then uh, you can do that. So that's why it's so nice to use runes, so it's easy to do. Now, since this is a success case, uh, I'm going to go and find my success oils or something that would work for this in particular. So I have all my oils in a particular uh, box here. We don't have too much room here, but I have my oils all listed in a box. These are all the different bottles. Let me see if I can uh, find that. I'm doing a lot of rituals lately, and I remember where I stuck them. Well, here's an interesting oil, Fast Lock. So this is a good success oil. This is bringing luck, success. Uh, you know, there's an old saying, I'd rather be lucky uh, than good. So it's all ready to go here. We've got the client in there. We've got the energy for that. And... Um, that's a protective energy. Let's use so let's use a power energy, which is in the purple spectrum. This pushes more energy. Now we want to bring luck to this. So you always shake the bottle. Oops. And you can see, oops, this actually the roller came out. And that can happen. I've had this for years. Or you can rub it on with your finger. Generally, you don't want to do this because now you've got that all that stuff in your hands, but it's not, you know, it's not a problem. It's a luck oil. And you do it clockwise. Generally, you're going to do it this way. And, of course, you shake the bottle forward so there's enough actual uh, oil there. So sometimes this happens deliberately. And this person does need a lot of luck. He's going through some very tough situations. So sometimes uh, that's part of the energies to make things happen. And, of course, it smells wonderful, as all of our oils do. It's amazing how, even though they're alchemical in nature, they have fantastic fragrances. So let's clean that up. That's no big deal. It's just a success oil. The more it gets on you and everywhere else, the better. Who can have enough luck? Not me. Much as you get, the better. So now, this is all ready to go. You have the light. We're giving him a purplish empowerment, pushing that energy out there. He's, uh, what we've done is perched it on top of one of these for a safety factor, but that means it's going to get even hotter up here for safety reasons. Now we're going to light it. And of course, I use electric lighters, and they work great. I haven't charged this in a while. There we go. And these are those electric lighters. If you don't have one of these, get them. Why use that butane stuff? Again, it's wasteful. I try and use, and all you do is recharge this uh, with your typical uh, computer recharging here. It's a great design, and they really work great. Get a good one, and um, it's a great lifetime tool. Now you're set. All you've got to do is close it. All the energy is there, and of course, while you're doing this, you're thinking about your success. Now you have, you can see how safe this is. There's no way that you can really um, get to that open flame and cause problems. Um, if you bang it, it's going to go out. If it tips over, it's going to go up against glass or metal. So even if it stay lit for a period of time. But these kind of candles do not stay lit the minute they are not perfectly flat. They tend to go out. That's one of the good things. And there's usually a lot of water, I should say, a lot of uh, the melted candle wax in there. And that, of course, means that uh, if you bang it, it's going to go out easy. Right now we just lit it, but if you bang it a little and so forth, it's going to go out. But you can see it's all glass everywhere. So you never want to get anything that's open. Even something like this, you can see it's metal everywhere. There's no way that the flame that's in here is going to touch anything. But where is the danger? 
Well, the danger is always the top here. This, ow, whoa, that's already hot. So if you touch it up there, you're gonna burn yourself. And you can see that the flame is very close. So that's already red hot and it probably only took about three minutes. So this is gonna, this is gonna, now if you try and grab this here, too hot, you're not gonna be able to do it. So you're gonna have to use an oven mitt to pick this up and move it. But generally you put it in place and then you light it. You don't light it here and then carry it somewhere else like I did, but I'm demonstrating it. Now this you can turn on and off as well if you want to um, save your batteries a little, well you can turn it off. Then you can turn it on if you want to again and then you can change the color. Generally you leave the same color through the ritual. So this is a success generating ritual and you want this to burn. Now this is gonna burn for 12 hours and it's almost 100% safe. Now if for some reason or another, uh, if a piece of paper or something was to be placed here, um, you could probably would catch on fire because it gets so hot after hours. And again, the flame is closer to the top here because of the way I have it set up. But how is that gonna happen? If you put it in a safe place and uh, you do that properly, you're not gonna have that problem. Let's see if I have something. Do I have a, uh, something I can carry over there? I guess I'm gonna have to risk it with my tissue here. But the whole idea is you put it in a safe place, you have no problem. So it's gonna sit like this for 12 hours. The other nice thing about tea lights is they go out on their own. When it's used up, it goes out. Now, taper candles won't do that. They burn down into the holder. The holder oftentimes breaks or you have other problems. You ruin the holders. That's a very much of a terrible fire hazard when it's in a holder, when it's outside. Not with tea lights. Tea lights go out and uh, they don't continue burning and this is a real problem, particularly with tapers, and I've had a lot of problems with that. But you don't want to use that. They're very toxic. These candles, for one reason or another, even though I think they're paraffin-based, don't seem to put out any soot. In fact, we can look at it. I mean, had, I've been burning in this, and you don't see any soot in there at all, even up and everything else. So for one reason or another, um, tea lights don't seem to put out a lot of soot. So, it's very safe, and as I said, there's lots of lanterns. You can go to a place like Amazon or eBay, and you can find hundreds of these things, fancy, expensive or not. This is your typical model. I think these ran about 15, uh, 15 each. You can find them as cheap as a 9 each. It depends on what you're getting. If they're fancy, even though this is small, I think I paid a lot of money for that. I wanted a small one at the time. But that's it. That's a basic ritual. Now, you can add a lot of things. I'm going to show you that here of how you add onto um, in a lantern to make it more specific. I'm going to show you actually how to make a money lantern. 